so ladies and gentlemen it's indeed my proud honor and privilege to welcome you all on behalf of the entire governing committee of kaho the consortium of accredited healthcare organizations to welcome you to the first academic program of the year 2021 and it also gives me great pleasure to introduce you our new logo as you can see on the screen which is now different with three petals and a drop and the three petals representing the kaho healthcare institutions kaho diagnostic centers and kaho individual quality professionals and all i think aiming and trying to embrace the drop of knowledge to in their continuous journey of quality improvement this particular day is very special for us and what a beginning of the year 2021 i must say is that it is the formal inauguration of our international webinar series that has been launched and the person to do that is none other than dr peter lackman the ceo of international society for quality it's a double pleasure for me sir uh, you are a fellow uh, pediatrician for me and he has been a person with great i would say clinical experience and as a leader in quality improvement and patient safety he was uh, responsible for bringing the quality improvement program at the great orbund street hospital where he was the deputy medical director and he led the patient safety initiatives in that organization prior to joining isqua he was also a consultant uh, pediatrician at the royal free hospital and dr lakman has been the national clinical lead for safe a health foundation funded uh, program which aims to improve situation awareness in clinical teams uh he is the co-founder and chairperson of the pediatric international patient safety and quality community so it's really sir what an honor what a pleasure it is for us to welcome you to formally inaugurate and launch this program over to dr peter lakman uh thank you very much vj uh, just for that welcome it's a great honor for me to start the year 2021 with this program an initiative we are doing with our friends kaho uh which anurada reminded me we started off a few years ago uh, at a meeting at one of our conferences and now we're here today launching this international program in india and it's our first isqua event of the year with you so we very pleased why it is so important is that by joining together we can really make a difference We at Esquire believe in spreading knowledge, building networks, and giving you a voice. And this is exactly what we're doing today with Kaho. Uh, we have one of our board members, Dr. Shin Oshura from Japan, who's one of your speakers today. And we have a series for the rest of the year. Every month on the first Tuesday of the month, you will have a talk by one of our. Uh, experts academic uh, academic uh, academy members and people who are really willing to share their knowledge with you so that we can make a real difference uh, as you know um, 2020 to 2030 is a who decade of patient safety and this is why it is so important that we spread the knowledge that's required in order to have patient safety worldwide so you will hear from experts who have done work in different countries and there'll be a lot of take home messages what we want you to do is continue the learning through the kaho programs and through our fellowship program uh, isqua is a membership organization and as you can see uh, by joining with us these kind of things can happen and we really need to work together to make a real difference going forward so Uh, I'm not going to speak very long because there's lots that you can learn but you can always contact me to to discuss what you want to find out about patient safety and quality we can lead you to different directions but the most important thing is to listen 
to learn and to apply and to make a difference. And you, when you go back after today's talk, think about what you can do in your own circumstances to make a difference for the people who seek care. At this time of COVID, we have to work together to think differently of how not to return back to what we did to before, but to return to a better place, to go to somewhere where we have made a difference and made changes in quality and safety. There's a lot we can learn from each other. So let's learn together and I wish you well. So I want to, I want to thank the team uh, at, at CAHO for inviting us at ISCO to join you on this venture. And when I had the invitation, there's only one answer I could give, which was yes, a great idea. And I'm very happy to see us go on the way. So thank you very much. And I wish you well for the rest of the year. And may we all together come through this current crisis in a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Peter Lachman. We appreciate your taking the time to inaugurate this CAHO Esquire International Webinar Series. So I'm Dr. Anuradha Pichmani, Joint Secretary Hospital for CAHO. It's my pleasure to welcome our speaker for today's webinar, Dr. Shin Ushiro, Professor and Divisional Director, Division of Patient Safety, Kyushu University Hospital, Japan. Dr. Shin Ushiro has strong interest in patient safety and has championed the themes of just culture and patient-centeredness in the various leadership roles he has held till date. In his distinguished career, Dr. Shin Ushiro has gathered a variety of experiences as a surgeon, a basic uh, science researcher, a patient safety officer, and a government official. And uh, all these roles have enriched his perspectives with deep insights to raising the standards of healthcare quality. From his position as an executive board member, of the Japan Council for Quality Healthcare, along with those of being a board member of ISQUA and the Japan Society for Quality and Safety in Healthcare, Dr. Shino Shiro brings new learnings that could be replicated elsewhere for greater good. I now welcome Dr. Shino Shiro to deliver his talk on incident reporting, analysis, and building the culture of safety. And with this, I have some information to all the participants. I request all the participants to kindly post their questions on the chat box. And again, request all the participants to stay on till the end of the session, as we have an interesting poll for all of you. And the participating certificate with the fellowship credit points will be sent to all the participants who stay till the end of this webinar. So uh, with this, over to you, Dr. Shinoshiro. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pichu Mani, for kind introduction of my current activity and my uh, CV. Uh, and um, hello, everybody. Uh, I am really honored and uh, privileged to be a part of this valued international webinar series. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, reporting and the learning system of adverse event, but I hope I will come back to this seminar again with new topics. And uh, let, me, uh, let me share my slide. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So let's get on to my presentation. Today I'm going to talk about the national uh, incident reporting system in Japan. And I will focus on the Japan's experience over the last 15 years. I am Dr. Shin Yushiro. I work in University Hospital and also I work in Japan Council for Quality Healthcare, which carries out reporting and the learning system under the government ordinance. And I also work as a board member of VSQA. And uh, last year I was appointed to uh, the, the advisor to the minister in the Ministry of Health Japan. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, give you a, br a brief introduction on my organization, which is JQ, Japan Council for Quality Healthcare. Uh, it is found, uh, founded in 1995. The main project used to be hospital accreditation, as, and uh, the project is now uh, hospital accreditation, but uh, uh, we grew our project, including reporting on the learning system and other projects. 
Our organization is chaired by Dr. Hirobumi Kawakita. Uh, he used to be a chairperson of uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Hospital Association, and he's really influential person, not only in medical society, but also in political society in Japan. Our organization is founded by many organizations, including two major bodies, which is Japan Medical Association, which is Physicians Association, and another one is the Ministry. And of course, uh, JQ is a member, an organizational member of ISQA. And uh, we, are, uh, we are willing to enhance our collaboration, collaborative activity uh, with uh, bodies uh, on global scale. And uh, this is to, uh, 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 to show you the, uh, the list of our projects, including hospital accreditation on the top. Um, hospital accreditation on the top. And it also includes reporting and learning system of medical institutions and the community pharmacy as well. And uh, uh, more importantly, uh, all those projects are operated uh, in the presence of patient representatives. This is our policy. So we call our, our organization a neutral and third body in Jap Japanese medical society. And uh, next, I would like to give you a brief background of, uh, of the launch of national reporting and learning system in Japan. Uh, in late 1990s and early 2000, uh, Japan went through devastating medical malpractice cases. Uh, for instance, on the, on the top, uh, what happened in Yokohama City University Hospital, uh, which is located in the suburbs of Tokyo. What happened is that the patient, two patients for surgery were mixed up. So the heart of patient X and the lung of patient Y were mixed up. And we also observed other deadly accident at that time. So in response to a growing concern of patient, on patient safety of, uh, in Japanese society, uh, the Ministry of Health, MOH, launched a holistic uh, uh, patient safety policy, including uh, two levels of reporting and learning system, which are the one in hospital and the, another one at national level. So um, when uh, the policy was uh, compiled, uh, MOH had already initiated reporting and learning system of near miss event. Uh, only near miss event because uh, medical institutions fears of reporting uh, deadly accident to uh, to government or government agency uh, because they they are uh, qualified to penalize uh, medical institutions anytime. So the initial reporting system was operated by the government agency, but in response to the holistic policy, national policy on patient safety, the government uh, prepared a subsidiary budget for operation, and the government also uh, revised the government ordinance for uh, operating reporting and learning system. So uh, then uh, the project uh, moved from the government agency to JQ, uh, this is uh, the project of near miss event reporting, and we also included uh, adverse event reporting. And uh, JQ launched a new project in 2004 under the government ordinance. And two years later, uh, the um, the government again revised the healthcare act and uh, government ordinance again to mandate all the medical institutions. To, uh, to install internal reporting and learning system. So the two levels of reporting and learning system were equipped in Japanese medical society in 2006. And what happened next is that uh, the, the Minister of Health 
came to us again to ask for launching Miami's event reporting system of pharmaceutical uh, community pharmacy. So now we are uh, now JQ is now operating several types of reporting and learning system. Well, this is the revised government uh, government ordinance, which says administrators of the, of the hospital uh, clinics and the birth center shall develop and install such measures as reporting of medical incidents that occur in medical institution. And uh, this is a slide to, uh, to tell you about how uh, two levels of reporting and learning system are related each other. So I told you that uh, medical institutions uh, were mandated to, uh, to install internal reporting system uh, uh, under the Healthcare Act. And the, those facilities are in, regularly inspected by the central or local governments. For instance, my, universe, my hospital, which is a university hospital, is in, inspected annually by uh, central government. And the, some of medical institutions uh, participated in JQ's national level reporting and learning system. But please note that some types of hospitals are mandated to report and uh, uh, to report adverse event under the government ordinance, which are university hospitals like my hospital and the hospitals run by national hospital group, which accounts for may maybe 150 hospital in the group. So uh, in JQ, I am in charge of national level reporting and learning system. And in my hospital, I'm in charge of internal reporting and learning uh, system. I am working in Kyushu University Hospital with 1,275 beds. And uh, I took a position in my hospital six years ago and I observed uh, observed nearly 4,000 incident reports or less annually in 2014. But uh, I was successful in growing the number of incident reports uh, since then. And uh, uh, last year, uh, we observed nearly 5,000 incident reports uh, in my hospital. This year, due to the pandemic of COVID-19, the, the number of reports are relatively less, but now uh, the latest figure shows that uh, shows uh, we are collecting as many uh, reporting uh, as we used to. So coming back to the national level reporting and learning system, I told you that we are operating uh, several types of reporting and learning system. Uh, the first one is uh, the system uh, related to medical institution, clean, uh, hospital and clinic. And the next one is ph community pharmacy. The third one is very unique. It only collects profound cerebral palsy. In other words, uh, brain damaged baby birth during delivery. And the last one is operated by different organization and which col only collects fatal case, accidental death case. Uh, this is the overview of the adverse event reporting and learning system of medical institutions. We collect adverse event and uh, near miss event as well through web-based reporting system. And uh, our reporting uh, form includes coding, uh, coding data and the text data as well. And we occasionally make on-site visit to medical institutions to, uh, to get fully uh, familiar uh, with what happened uh, in that institution. And uh, we Put, uh, put collected data on collective analysis, and we produce annual and quarterly report, monthly alert, and we provide a database of reported cases, and we also provide training course. 
And once again, please note that our system is operated by steering committee in the presence of experts and patient representatives. And uh, the products we have produced are on the web, open to the public for transparency. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about the system of uh, community pharmacy uh, in detail today, but this is an equivalent system uh, for community pharmacy. Uh, com uh, definitely community pharmacy plays, uh, uh, plays an important role uh, to even today and in the future as well in super aging society like Japan. And uh, we also uh, conduct sort of reporting and learning system of brain damaged baby. What is unique about this system is that we pay monetary compensation. We pay money uh, to uh, baby and families uh, uh, in which baby developed cerebral palsy uh, during, uh, due to the cause which took place during delivery. This is very unique system. And uh, we also uh, provide investigative report uh, to the family and uh, child birth facility. And we observed the rapid decrease in the lawsuit case, rapid decrease in the lawsuit case related to obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, well, uh, I'm not going to talk about a lot on, on this system, but I will come back to this uh, webinar with this, with this topic. Uh, I hope, uh, I, hope we, I will come back soon. So coming back to the reporting and learning system of, of adverse event and near miss event, uh, we, uh, we launched the system in 2004. Uh, so uh, our system is included in WHO draft of guideline for adverse event reporting and learning system, which was published in 2005. And the report was revised last year uh, to coincide with uh, the second World Patient Safety Day. And I was invited to many WHO meetings for delivering a lecture on this system. So uh, the, name, uh, the country name of Japan is in also included here. Uh, this slide shows uh, the JEDA Declaration on Patient Safety to, uh, to 2019 compiled in the fourth minister Global Ministerial Summit on Patient Safety held by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, the item number five mentioned to the nationwide reporting and the learning system to spread uh, on global scale. Well, uh, this is the, re uh, the current registration status uh, of our reporting and learning system. I told you that some hospitals are mandated to report adverse event. There are 274 hospitals, including my hospital, to uh, mandatory report uh, adverse event. And the voluntary participants are 820. And uh, the number of medical institutions who, which report a near miss event is 1,256. And there are uh, duplication uh, overlapping. Uh, so um, totally we have 1,500 participants currently. This, ex uh, this accounts for say 17 to 18% of Japanese hospitals. So uh, this is a group photo of National University Hospital group uh, taken to observe the very first World Patient Safety Day. Uh, well, uh, okay. So uh, though, um, uh, they are working in National University Hospitals which are subject to reporting in our system. Uh, we work, uh, usually we work independently, but uh, regarding patient safety, we are all united. And uh, this, this uh, what you see here is the trajectory of the adverse event reporting to uh, JQ year by year trend. Uh, you see the steady increase in the number of uh, adverse event reporting cases. 
And uh, the latest uh, uh, statistics says that uh, we collected for more than 4,000 accident cases and nearly 30,000 near miss cases in 2019. So um, I would like to present probable reasons for the steady rise in external reporting shown in the previous slide. I would like to uh, I'd like to emphasize no blame culture and anonymity in operation by JQ, and uh, the repeated call uh, by myself for registration to the series of uh, lectures across Japan. Well, I make I usually make twenty to thirty lectures annually, and the feedback to medical professional with helpful products. I'm going to show those products later on. And there was uh, uh, incredible pressure on medical institutions for registration by media and patient family and lawyers. And the guidance instruction by the local government through annual or regular inspection. And uh, uh, we, enhance, we enhance the transparency and accountability by uh, providing data for practical and research use to the healthcare fronts and the research institution. <laughs> I think uh, those uh, uh, the uh, primar uh, primary reason uh, for successful operation of our reporting and learning system. What you see here is the contents of annual and quarterly reports. Uh, we include a numerical analysis and a thematic analysis. This is one of the example of numerical analysis. We provide uh, tables and uh, figures. Um, looking at this, uh, looking at this figure, uh, nursing care is most common because it includes patients fall. Uh, and I'd like to stress that uh, we have thirty percent of uh, cases related to procedures, include including surgery or invasive uh, procedures, which is very very uh, helpful for our education. <laughs> And uh, this table shows the frequent adverse event. Uh, we see uh, uh, overdose as the administration of drug very frequently, wrong drug administration, overdose prescription, wrong patient, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, um, we, we produce quarterly report and annual report. On, uh, on each report, we include more than 100 uh, tables, uh, and uh, all of the tables are on the web, uh, which is open to the public. And if you click one table, uh, you see the actual table, and you, if you click the numeric number in the table, you see individual cases. And let's go, uh, move on to the thematic analysis. We, uh, since 2004, uh, we have produced more than 200 thematic analysis shown here. Let me magnify this slide. In the latest uh, quarterly report, we uh, picked up uh, cases related to rehabilitation, cases related to heparin solution, overdose of heparin solution, and a special diet for patients with dysphagia. And uh, for patients with dysphagia, we serve special diet, which is, which is not the liquid, but half solidified diet to prevent aspiration. But occasionally uh, we serve wrong diet. So patients begin to suffer aspiration. Um, Looking, uh, looking at the uh, pages of thematic analysis, which, uh, which is as, as long as 10 to 20 pages, and uh, it looks like this. It includes uh, case presentation and uh, collective analysis of probable cause and preventive measures. And you will learn what sort of adverse events are taking place in Japan and how they are happening and what type of preventive and improvement, improvement measures are actually taken in facilities through collective analysis of our report. Uh, 
For instance, I, I will give you uh, an example of case presentation, uh, the, which is wrong dosage administration of heparin solution. What happened is shown in this slide and the following three slides. A physician planned to administer heparin solution at 100 units per kilogram per day to a baby in NICU, but the physician wrongly prescribed it at per hour, resulting in 24 time overdose. The prescription, including dilution protocol and the flow rate, was recorded on a prescription sheet, which is which was a paper by handwriting, uh, handwriting. And in general, continuous infusion is dispensed by pharmacist, who is very professional uh, during daytime shift. However, this event happened at night. So injection had to be initiated during a, a night shift. Therefore, a nurse who is not a professional for inspecting uh, the dispensing, uh, nurse dispensed it according exactly to the wrong prescription without without inspection or clarification to doctors. So on day two, heparin solution was again prescribed in the same dosage on pres prescription sheet by physician's handwriting. But at this prescription, it was be assured by another two physicians and subsequently inspected by pharmacist. This is very good. And pharmacist dispensed it. But the pharmacist asked the physician to clarify the reason for administering, administering heparin to the baby. However, uh, the pharmacist didn't identify the overdose. The baby manifested bleeding tendency on blood test and fluid retention in the stomach. Finally, it turned to be massive blood clot in the stomach. However, the patient was kept under observation as similar symptom had been observed since the childbirth. On day three, APTT was prolonged, which means insufficient blood, uh, blood coagulation. Therefore, therefore, heparin was halted for one hour and resumed with reduced flow rate by 75%. And at the night, 9 p.m. at night on the same day, APTT was still prolonged. So the physician discontinued heparin, but the baby began to, na uh, began to manifest nasal bleeding. On the next day, day four, APTT was 90 uh, seconds, i.e. it was it's back to normal value. Accordingly, heparin administration resumed. At this point, the physician recalculated the original dosage in previous prescription to eventually identify the overdose. So this is the schematic interpretation of the case I described. In NYCU, uh, there, there was no pharma pharmacist there was only physician and nurse at night, and the physician prescribed a uh, heparin solution. Uh, uh, and uh, he wrote uh, the prescription on a paper by handwriting, and the nurse uh, dispensed it at night with no inspection. And uh, uh, another, thing, uh, another thing I need to add is, is about ordering system. It only carries the number of vials number of ampules and bottles, et cetera. There is no, uh, no uh, precise amount of heparin solution and the flow rate of heparin solution. So in different place uh, at pharmaceutical department, uh, there was pharmacist uh, who, talk, who said uh, they inspected, but they just looked at the screen of ordering system. Uh, only, hepa, uh, only the number of vials and the number of ampules were uh, displayed on the screen. This is very, very insufficient uh, inspection. Uh, we also include probable cause and the preventive measures in our thematic analysis, but in order to save time today, I'd like to skip uh, those two, uh, those two uh, uh, issues. And uh, PDF, uh, file of our individual thematic analysis is uh, it's posted on our website uh, with classification in different color. So you can access, anybody can access to our uh, thematic analysis. Uh, well, uh, uh, 
uh, this is uh, the production flow on thematic analysis, uh, initial, original analysis, and analysis of recurrent events and uh, monthly alert. I told about the thematic analysis, and if necessary, uh, we also publish monthly alert with the th same theme. And if the similar case or exactly the same case uh, take places over and over again, uh, we once again pick up uh, pick up those cases as theme of for analysis of recurrent event. So we do the same uh, for recurrent cases. We so far we have uh, published uh, nearly two hundred themes on recurrent event. Um, okay, I'd like to change the topics of collaborative work. Uh, uh, with a uh, hospital group, which is Japan National University Hospital Alliance for Patient Safety. It is called, uh, it is dubbed as JANUFA Patient Safety. Years ago, uh, I remember it was 2012, eight years ago, we picked up uh, a the a thematic analysis, which was failure to confirm CT and the MRI imaging report. And we produced a thematic analysis and monthly alert in 2012. And in order to give you the image of the case, uh, I'd like to uh, tell you about uh, one example. What happened was that the patient diagnosed with abdominal aortic aneurysm underwent the CT scanning for follow-up. And vascular physician recorded the findings of, on the, of the CT image on medical chart. And one year later, another physician, nephrologist, uh, in charge of the patient, learned from another hospital that the patient developed lung cancer. Reviewing retrospectively the CT imaging report issued by radiologist one year ago, it described, it described as there is a lesion highly suspicious of lung cancer. So this is the uh, this is the case uh, uh, which was highlighted uh, at that time and in recent years in Japan. So uh, over the last couple of years, Japanese media highlighted uh, the case like uh, the similar cases, and uh, this is a big uh, newspaper report uh, which says. The physician in charge ignored the cancer in organs that he or she didn't specialize in. And the CT imaging reports mentioned to cancer. And in this university hospital, nine similar cases took place, including two fatal cases. So in collaboration with uh, Jennifer, uh, we and they, uh, they uh, conducted a questionnaire survey in 2017, and they, com uh, they compiled the report in 2018. Uh, this is just to give you an example of uh, our uh, questionnaire. Uh, the question was, is physician reminded of a new issuance of imaging report when it is produced by radiologist? And it turned out that only 58% of university hospitals are installed with notification system, electric notification system on issuance of the imaging report. And physicians need to keep the city taken in mind, not to fail to refer to the report. This could cause error definitely. So the notification system rapidly spread in the Alliance during uh, 2018 to 2020. So I'd like to switch the topic to our monthly alert. Monthly alert, uh, if I mention to only one thing, I, uh, our alert include illustration uh, to facilitate a better understanding and instant understanding of the key statement. So uh, we have a big collections of adverse event uh, illustrations. So anybody can access to it. And we have English version of our alert on the web. So, so far we are, uh, uh, we are delivering our alerts uh, through, a lot of, uh, through a lot of channels. And uh, we are delivering 70% of Japanese hospitals through fax. 
and we also provide the, our uh, alerts to different channels to the rest 30% of Japanese hospital as well. So our alert is really, really famous uh, among uh, hospital and clinics in Japan. And as I told you, we also produce English version of alerts, uh, which is distributed uh, on global uh, basis through the Canadian project, uh, which is called the Global Patient Safety Alerts, operated by Canadian Patient Safety Institute. They have uh, the video clip to describe their project on YouTube. And if you look at uh, the YouTube site, uh, you, in the beginning, you see the message from Sir Liam Donaldson, or WHO envoy on patient safety. And next, you see the sharing of alerts between Japan and the United States. And finally, you see the app which works on the web. Uh, this is a slide which I pictured two years ago uh, in WHO Collaboration Center in Italy. Uh, they are trying to enhance collaboration with Canadian patient safety, safety uh, through uh, the similar project, uh, which is uh, sharing the, uh, the alert on global basis. So I believe that our alert, uh, English version of our, our alert will, uh, will be more distributed uh, worldwide. Uh, we have a job, uh, we have English pages uh, of our reporting and learning system. So you just input Japan Council for Quality Healthcare and the project to collect medical nearness adverse event information uh, on Google site and uh, you just click and you will reach our English pages. It, it encompasses annual report and the medical uh, monthly alert as well. And uh, the next topic is the database of our uh, adverse event and the near-miss event. And you can narrow down uh, uh, by inputting keyword or choosing adverse event or near-miss event or both. And uh, you can narrow down the cases to the one of your interest. If you input the keyword as dialysis and you, if you choose an adverse event, uh, you search uh, 706 adverse events related to dialysis. And you can download it uh, onto your computer instantly. And you can open the file through Microsoft Excel for research use of or for practical use as well. It includes uh, coding data and the text data as well. So what uh, we are currently doing is the collaboration with expert on uh, artificial intelligence for uh, to to develop a system uh, to analyze uh, our reportings uh, our uh, reporting uh, uh, the reported cases through artificial intelligence. Uh, this project is chaired by a female researcher from Hong Kong. So I'm not a, a, a specialist of I, uh, information, uh, artificial intelligence. So I'd like to skip the much detailed machinery of artificial intelligence, but uh, what we are trying to, to achieve is that if we input uh, our uh, incident report like this, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, analyze the structure and the meaning of each word. And they will tell us, for example, doctor means person and prescribed is a verb related to medication and the diltiazem is the name of the drug and so on. So oh, now we are um, uh, producing, uh, no, we, we produced uh, uh, text, uh, we produced a text for uh, training, uh, uh, training artificial intelligence over the last two years. What we did is the annotation. Uh, physician is the people involved. Two milliliter is the strength related. Uh, this, is the, uh, this, this is what we call annotation. Uh, we label each word with uh, its meaning. And we developed annotation a training course. And uh, this uh, project is chaired by her. Uh, she's from Hong Kong 
and I also joined uh, in the training course. And we, uh, in collaboration with the uh, university and the private company, we have already produced the 300 annotated JQ medication instant reports in, uh, and the instant report corpus. So what we are, we are doing right now is to distinguish what what uh, which drug is intended and which drug is actually delivered to a patient. Uh, we are trying to distinguish one from another. Uh, we call it intention factuality annotation. So in parallel with uh, cutting edge research uh, through artificial intelligence, we also observe conventional type of research. This is a research paper uh, to uh, figure out characteristics of medical adverse event, near miss event associated with the laparoscopic and thoracoscopic surgery. In other words, abdominal surgery and chest surgery. And our database uh, is, is highlighted, is focused on not only by researchers or medical professionals, but also uh, by pharmaceutical companies because uh, they may find, they may identify the, their products uh, in, on, our web, on our database. So there are three different alerting documents, alerting materials from pair of companies which produces uh, drugs uh, uh, which appears uh, like uh, as sound like ca uh, drug cases on our uh, on our database. Uh, for instance, silase and the serenase, uh, lupafin and the lucefi, uh, glaceptor and the prograph. Uh, these sound uh, sound is very confusing to us Japanese people. And in two thousand twelve. Uh, uh, there was a successful event in uh, what happened is that Almal and Amarid was very notorious combination of sound like sound alike drugs in Japanese medical society and eventually Almal was removed by the company from the market for patient safety reasons. Uh, now we are trying to distribute our data and the knowledge through SNS, which is Facebook. And uh, I myself hold uh, a press conference regularly uh, for quarterly report and annual report. Uh, so, so I think uh, I have held the press conference uh, 60, more than 60 press conferences since 2004 when uh, the system was launched. So uh, this is the takeaways. Uh, Japan underwent desperate medical accident in late 1990s, which highlighted on installing, reporting and learning system on institutional and the national, uh, national level. Uh, JQ launched the national system uh, since 2004 and successfully operated it with production of reports, alerts, database, and so on. The products of the system have been widely utilized for practical use and research use. Equivalent systems were built step-by-step, step, such as systems for community pharmacy and the perinatal medicine, particularly no fault compensation investigation prevention system for brain damaged baby called cerebral palsy is so unique that deserves distribution on global basis. I, I hope I would like to come back to this seminar with this topic. The last one is key elements on the, uh, on the success, uh, no blame culture, anonymity principle, pressure by media, transparency, accountability, awareness of global trend, and so on. Okay, uh, this is all I have today. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture. Thank you again. Thank you, I'd Dr. Like to stop. Thank you, Zoom, for sharing you so your experience on making healthcare better. Mm -hmm. There were many great pointers and lessons for us all in your talk. And I'm sure the participants would want to ask you more about them. Yeah. So to take the deliberations forward, I, would, I now invite Professor Dato, Dr. Ravindran Jagasodi, President of ASPWA and a very committed champion of quality in healthcare. Over to you, Dr. Ravindran Jagasodi. Thank you, uh, Dr. Anuradha and Professor Shin, that was a very enjoyable lecture. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, there have been a lot of questions that are coming in, but one okay. theme that comes out from these questions is between mandatory reporting mm -hmm. and voluntary reporting. Okay. And you have illustrated a national system mm -hmm. which started with mandatory reporting and mm -hmm. moved on. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, would you like to elaborate further? Do you visualize any system that will be purely voluntary? without some pressure from patients as well as governments. Um, okay, uh, you're asking, uh, asking me for elaborating. Uh, no, so, basically, uh, uh, basically, okay. yes, basically, uh, your system is yes. started with a mandatory uh, mm -hmm. requirement mm -hmm. from the government. Yes. And there has been uh, uh, voluntary reporting of various incidents. Okay. So, how do you encourage them? Uh -huh. How do you encourage? Okay. Yes. Oh, well, uh, actually, uh, the reporting learning system uh, was uh, included in very famous IOM report, Institute of Medicine report, in, uh, published in the United States in 1999. So, uh, JQ thought that this is a global trend uh, uh, to carry out a reporting a learning system. But uh, uh, in around two year 2000, Japanese Medical Society uh, had no idea of the, uh, the global trend. So uh, uh, we made uh, lectures uh, maybe 60 times at, uh, at most. Uh, uh, in some year uh, across Japan, and we uh, described uh, what we need to do as uh, medical professionals for patient safety to catch up global trend. And the government supported us, and the government uh, 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 instructed the medical institutions uh, in promoting manner on annual or uh, regular uh, inspection. Uh, and uh, the patient and the media also supported us very, very effectively. And uh, they, uh, uh, they um, pressured medical institutions to uh, register uh, in our system uh, in, order to, uh, in order to exhibit their, at, uh, their principle or their attitude toward the patient safety. So uh, if, if big incident happens, press people and family and the lawyers always ask, asked the, the administrator of hospital or clinics uh, if they are participating in JQ's reporting and the learning system. Uh, in that case, if they say no, they are very ashamed or they are really blamed by them. So, so all those uh, collaborative effort encouraged the hospital and clinic and the birth center to participate in our system. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. The other question is, uh, some persons have asked, is there a benchmark for the number of incidents that should be reported in any institution or in the country in terms, in relation to the number of patient encounters that we have? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, actually, uh, on national uh, on national level, there is only one uh, reporting and learning system, which is JQ's system. So we do not have a benchmark. But at the institutional level, uh, many Japanese uh, hospitals disclose the number of incident cases, so we can benchmark each other. So uh, I told you that uh, my hospital has more than one one thousand and two hundred. 75 beds and we produce uh, nearly 5,000 incident reports annually. Uh, I believe that this is a little bit uh, more than average, not very, not many. Okay, all right. Uh, the other question is, yes, uh, you, I think, emphasize the fact that all these are non-punitive, they are anonymized mm -hmm. reports. Okay. All right, I think that's an important lesson that you have mm -hmm. so that you have encouraged reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, do you find that despite it being 
a non-punitive system, there have been actions taken on certain staff mm -hmm. or doctors regarding incidents that have been reported mm -hmm. by particular hospitals. Uh, uh, well, okay. Uh, at least, uh, at least in our system, there is no pen, uh, no pen, uh, punishment, no penalty uh, on, right. on the hospital uh, who reported. But if the case is publicized through media, uh, those hospitals or clinics are blamed, or, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, well, but uh, uh, to tell the truth, uh, in initial couple of years, I was I was hit by a fierce and intense questions from the media, uh, they urged me to disclose the name of the hospital or the names of medical professional involved in the, the accident. But I didn't say, I, this, I refused to uh, disclose the name because uh, the system is aims at patient safety. Uh, we need to preserve anonymity and uh, no blame culture. So the, nowadays, Japanese media is increasingly familiar with the idea uh, to how idea on how to operate this this system like this uh, for patient safety. So uh, as far as they are, uh, as far as hospitals and clinics are transparent and accountable for the case, uh, they are not very much blamed uh, in recent years. Uh, finally, one last question for you. Yes. Uh, do you feel that Japan will come to a certain stage where hospitals will be able to report their own incident reports to the public uh, in terms okay. of a, you know, a result chart, for example, a comparative chart between hospitals? Uh, I see. Well, okay. Uh, actually, uh, at this time point, I would say no, because uh, it's la uh, la labor intensive work to report all the cases which take place in the hospital. But uh, in my experience, uh, when I find deadly accident or a severe accident on newspaper, uh, those cases are surely reported to our system. So they are, I believe that they are reporting very, very important cases to JQ, but the cases with less harmful or no harm, uh, it's labor intensive, so they do, they, they do not report all the cases. Yeah, uh, just one question, which I missed out just now. Yes. Uh, do you have a program for second victims for, you know, for the uh, medical staff who are involved? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, that, that's a very question. And second victim is, uh, is, has been already known for years, but uh, there is no national system for, uh, uh, for installing the system or education and training course. But at the in institutional level, uh, uh, for example, in my hospital, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is a rule, at sort of terms and reference for treating, uh, treating uh, our staffs involved in the accident to prevent uh, sec uh, second victims. I think uh, uh, the, the systems for preventing second victims is spreading among big hospital in Japan, but in, among middle and small size hospital, there are thousands of those hospitals in Japan. Uh, they don't have the system or they don't have the knowledge on uh, second victims currently. Thank you. I think Dr. Okay. Shin also alluded yes. to the obstetric compensation scheme from mm -hmm. Japan. Yes. Uh, I think that's a very good scheme. And I think for more information, you probably need to invite Dr. Shin yeah. back for another lecture, as he yeah. mentioned. My uh, pleasure. Yes. So, uh, so in, in that sense, I would like to just summarize what we have learned today from Dr. Shin. I think he has taken you through the development of a system in Japan, which started with some disasters and which prompted them to look at themselves how to improve through first a mandatory system, which went on to a voluntary system, but some very important principles ran through this presentation. 
it is always a non punitive system it is always an anonymized system and you are looking at improvement so that the same disaster does not befall on you or to your patients and they have developed system improvement through all the various projects that they have inculcated and i think he has illustrated that in many ways and uh, there are many other questions which we didn't have time to answer but i'm sure they will share the questions with you and you would be able to provide an answer so i think it has been a very uh, uh, very uh, useful evening to spend listening to incident report system and as mentioned we are in the decade for patient safety improvement and this is one very very important system that we utilize and i think another important lesson which they picked up was involve the patients at every step of the way mm, yeah. uh, and all That's the reporting way. systems thank you very much i have learned mm -hmm. a lot I'm sure the rest of the audience learned a lot too so thank back you to very the much audience. thank you very much uh, professor jagasothi dr shinnu shiro for that wonderful presentation very enlightening and we are really looking forward to the day when there would be some volunt reporting system in our country in mm -hmm. fact aho has brought out a system which is called the convert the confidential mm -hmm. national voluntary event reporting tool it is mm -hmm. online we are trying to use that as a learning tool to mm -hmm. basically learn from reports from hospitals it's a very voluntary tool mm -hmm. let's see where we head we will take your advice we will be in touch with you and as a mark of appreciation towards this wonderful lecture mm -hmm. we would like to present to you a small certificate as a token of appreciation from us i would request our team to put the certificate yeah so this is as a contribution as wow, for the contribution as a speaker thank you very much dr shin ushiro thank you very much your participants thank you very much for joining today's session and we would encourage you to take part in the programs of kaho and also isqua isqua runs a fellowship program many of you must be aware of this i am a proud participant and a fellow of the international society of quality i can vouch on the standards this is a fellowship which is self paced online learning program designed for healthcare professionals who are passionate about quality improvement and making healthcare safer it's a great program use the opportunity of lockdown and pandemic to complete the fellowship program by isqua if you are interested you could write to this email id or you can also write to us there are special discounts if you are a kaho member we run a program with the asian society for quality asqua this is jointly by kaho and asqua this is an online course on certif uh, it's a certificate program in healthcare risk management this is chrm 16 e modules self paced learning 24 hours of content lot of activities exercises reference material mm -hmm. and you will need to complete this in 6 months today is a proud day for us we have our first participant who completed the program dr mm -hmm. dananjay vasunkar who is the mm -hmm. chief operating officer of iras lucknow medical college and hospital he has completed the program with a great percentage 82 percentage he has joined us now can we have your video dr vasunka congratulations to you for joining the program and for clearing the program thank you very much we have over 88 participants who have registered for this program the next program is migration from fourth edition to fifth edition those of you who are interested in knowing about the fifth edition of nabh standards please join this program we have over 608 participants registered for this program you could join in any time and log in and do the program we would encourage you to join this program we run a series of master class you all must be aware of that tomorrow we are starting our second series kaho master class series this is going to be department specific tomorrow session is on critical care we have over 300 participants who have registered already by dr farhan sheikh who is the head of pediatric intensive care unit at the rainbow children's hospital hyderabad the following week we have the laboratory group joining us and dr shankar sen gupta will be taking the session 
This is on Wednesdays between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Encourage you all to join the program. Next one, please. Yes, please block the date. The next international webinar series is going to be on human factors in patient safety by Professor Rene Am Alam, I'm sorry, Am Alberti. He is an ISQA expert, professor of medicine, a senior advisor on patient safety. It's going to be a very interesting session. Please block the date. We have had requests from many participants who couldn't join in today. So we will enhance our Zoom link to 1,000 participants. As of now, we have 500. So today we have the maximum. And we had many joining through Facebook Live. So we will enhance the Zoom link. And as many of you could join the uh, international webinar series. Please take the poll. And we would urge you to block the date, 2nd February, same time. Thank you all once again for joining. Thank you, Dr. Peter Lackman, for taking your time, for joining us, and for launching this program, and for the support Thank from you. ISCOA towards this endeavor. Thank you, Dr. Ravindran Jagasothi. Thank you, Dr. Shin Ushiro. Yeah. And all Bye. of us at CAHO are indebted to all of you for promoting the quality of safety and quality in this country. And we look forward to having all of you in the coming days, if things go well, when we have our KahoCon in April, we would love to have all of you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.